Hi, this is Dan from the Centre for Computing History and I'm sat in our wonderful 80s classroom in front of a beautiful BBC Micro and uh, we've got a lot of parents come to the museum and uh, they always look at a BBC and always think, what's that one thing I learned in school? What's that, what's that code I could, make it, I could make it do? Like the one thing I learned at primary school in the 80s. And uh, it was a classic 10, print, message, 20, go to 10. The classic. It looks like this. 10, print, Dan is best. Great. 20, go to 10. So all this does is it creates a loop. We're printing a message to the screen which says Dan is best, and we go back to that line and we keep doing it forever. Run your code with run. Brilliant. So uh, this is the default. This is what people seem to do. We come into this every day, you know, multiple times a day to check it out, make sure everything's running all right. And there's always someone got a hilarious message on the screen uh, scrolling forever, but it's, it's not good enough. Uh, that's all right, but then why not mix up? Why not make something really impressive? Why not blow uh, other people's minds? So if you're a parent coming with your kids to the Centre for Computer History, uh, why not show them a little bit of a, bit of a basic black magic? So that's great. White on black is all very good. Let's add some colour to our text. So very simple to do. Uh, same line. So again, line 10, print screen. And again, if you use basic before, you know that we use line numbers so that um, uh, the beep knows how to read your code. So it reads it sequentially, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We use big numbers like that. So in case we want to come back and add a line of code, sneak a line of code in the middle, we can use uh, 11, 12, 15, 17, all that jazz. So 10, print, and we need to introduce uh, a new, uh, a new uh, function. Character strings. We're going to put a number in here. The number we put in here dictates what text the color is going to be. Uh, text range uh, from uh, 129 to 135. So if we put 132, for example, that means our code is go our text is going to appear at whatever 132 corresponds to, which I think is blue. Uh, code is 132. So uh, we add the semicolon to tell it that there's more to come. So Dan is best. Awesome. So now simply our code is we're going to print a message to the screen. Uh, this is our uh, argument, how it's going to change. We're going to change this color, 132. Our message is going to be Dan is best. And uh, the classic. 20 go to 10 again, and if we run our code now, brilliant. See, we've done all right, that's not bad, it's not bad. Um, again, not very impressive, is it? I mean, you all just taken that code and added one small thing and made it a different color. Let's, let's have it cycling loads of different colors. So let's start again, let's have a nice clear screen. See, let's clear the screen. Um, let's look at our code as it was. Uh, so that's our existing code. Let's. Let's start from scratch, nice clean code. Let's introduce a means of uh, changing the color of the text with each cycle of the code. So what we're gonna do is 10 let x equals 129. So we've created a variable called x uh, and we're gonna use that to dictate the color of our text. So now line 20 is gonna be print character strings uh, x. Close it off and then our message Dan is best. So this x is going to be inserted into here each time we run the program. But let's change the x number. Let's change the variable x equals x plus 1. So now, uh, every time it runs through our cycle, every time it goes to 10, it's going to add 1 onto 129. So next time it runs a code, it runs a loop, it'll be 130, 140, 131, 130, all that jazz. But there's a problem. Uh, the numbers are limited to 135. After that, we have things like 136, 137. Uh, they have different functions. They make the text operate differently, but we're not worried about that right now. So all we're going to do is we're going to set a limitation. We're going to say that if you get to 135, go back to the original number, which is 129. So line 40 is going to be, if x is greater than 135, which is where the color ends, uh, x, uh, if 136 is actually makes the, makes the text flash on screen, which won't help us very much. So if x is greater than 135, then go back to uh, 129. Okay, so our code's gonna go through a loop, and each time it loops, it's gonna add one, and until it gets to 135, and it goes back to 129. Great, lovely stuff. Um, yep, also, so we want to go to line 20. If we go to line 10, that will reset our x variable, which means the color will never change. It'll still do the scrolling thing, but it'll never change the color of our text. So let's see what happens now. Let's run our code. Brilliant. It works kind of. As you can see, it scrolls too fast. We can't see what's going on. Uh, escape to stop your program running. Do not press break. Uh, don't press break unless you really mean it. Break will clear your code. Don't do that. Uh, so just remember that. Escape is better than break. Um, 
so let's look at our code so far. So we've got five lines of code, create our x variable, we've got our, our message with its blue variable, uh, we've got add x by, increase one x by one every time we do a loop, and then if it gets too high, go goes down again. So let's put a little break in here, let's change line 50. Uh, uh, let's change it to, for n equals one to 300, and then next. So this might look a bit strange to you, but all this does, uh, if, you use, if you use a Python, for example, um, you import the time library, there's time.sleep, and the parentheses, that's one. It's the same thing here. All we're going to do is when it gets to this line of code, it's going to count from 1 to 300, then continue the code. So all it does is, is adding a brief pause. So and then we need to add 60, should be go to 20 again. So if we run it now, it's a bit slower. Great, lovely stuff. So escape, not break. Let's clear the screen. Let's look at our code again. Create a variable called x. We summon it here to change the color of the text. We add to one to it. Uh, we limit it. We add a brief pause here. We go back to 20. The cycle continues on forever. So, not bad. So far, your family is going to think you're some sort of a wizard, which is pretty good. Um, but what if we made it a bit more exciting? What if we made it so the text was highlighted? That is a background color, and then text a different color on top of that background color. Super easy to do. Let's start some new code. I'm going to say 10, print, character strings. So character strings, this first number is the background text. Let's have 132, which should be blue. And we're going to introduce some new text here. Uh, character strings, 157. One, this doesn't change. This is what tells it that we're going to shift to a new layer, kind of. So we have our background color. We have our breaker here. Our foreground text color, which let's make uh, 130, for example. And then let's have our message again. Dan is best. Okay. Uh, 20, go to 10 again. All right, let's see what it looks like now. Brilliant. So we got uh, green on blue. Perfect. Again, looks good. Not very interesting. Make it a bit more interesting by using more variables. So let's start all over again. Ten, uh, let x equals 1, 2, 9. That's going to be our background color. 20, let's have a new one. Let y equals uh, 130. We don't want the background color and the text color to be the same, because otherwise you won't be able to see it. You just have bars going up down the screen. That's not ideal. So let x be 129, y is 130. And let's line 30, let's have a print character strings. That's going to be x. And then character strings, uh, that's going to be 157. Doesn't change. It's going to have to be our, our separator. And we're going to have character strings. Uh, y. Okay, and then we're going to have our message. Dan is best. Close it off. And again, let's increment these. So let's have line 40. X equals X plus 1. Line 50. Y equals Y plus 1. And again, set our limitations. 60. If X is greater than 135, then, then X equals uh, 129. And same thing, 70. If y is greater than 135, then y equals 129. Our limitations have been set. So uh, we'd add our delay for n equals 1 to, let's say, five, a bit longer delay. Uh, and then next. So here, we're all good. So in theory, <laughs> our code has these two numbers. We're going to insert them into our print instructions here. We're going to add them, add, increase them by one each time we go through. Set our limitations here. A uh, bit of a pause here. Let's run our code, see what happens next. Oh my goodness. You've just blown some young people's minds by doing this. Uh, it's pretty good. Let's, uh, let's make it a bit better. So let's break out of this. Clear the screen. Look at our code so far. Uh, what we can do is we can indent the text using an instruction called tab. This stuff can stay the same. Let's just alter our line 30, our print tab. So let's print character strings. And again, we'll keep this all the same. Character x, character strings, uh, 157. And character strings, uh, y. But this time, let's add a new instruction called tab. And tab is like a, a tab key on your computer. It just 
move stuff along. And we're gonna say tab 15. For me, tab 15. For me, for my message, Dan is best 15. Put it roughly in the centre, so that'll do nicely. And again, our message goes here, Dan is best. Close it off. Okay, let's run our code again. So now, I've been indented into the middle of the screen. Oh my goodness! Your family and friends and various onlookers scream. What is this blooming magic here? What next? Are you gonna hack the Gibson? And you say, yeah, I'm gonna hack the Gibson. So, uh, <laughs> congratulations if you, if you got that reference. Um, this is great, let's make our text move along the screen with each line. So, clear? Let's look at our code again. So, again, we've got tab being a random number here. Let's make that a variable and increment that variable. So let's insert a line between uh, 20 and 30. Let's have line 25, and we're gonna say, let z equals four. Let's start at four. So four is roughly about right for the left. So let z equals four, and I'm gonna change this tab, the parentheses, to read z. So that's fine. But 30, print character strings x, flip character strings 157, character strings y, and then tab is gonna be our z variable. Okay, and then finally our message, Dan is best, close it off. Let's see what happens now. So we're gonna run our code. Great, so they're all at four, 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 great. Look at our code again. So now we need to increment this by one, so let's put a line 55 in here. So z equals z plus one. And again, we need to have our limitation, so let's add line 75. If z goes too high, so it goes above 25, then z is four again, goes back down to four. Okay, so let's see what happens now, we run our code. So again, we're going to right, 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 right. And there we go, we recycle back to the beginning. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. People around you have like stopped, they've dropped their coffees, they're like getting their phones out to record your uh, ACE, uh, BBC Basic Programming skills. But uh, there's one last thing we can do, let's make this brilliant, even more brilliant than it is. Let's have it so the text snakes up and down the screen. Super easy to do. So, let's start again from scratch so we know how we got to where we are now. So we need some variables, let x equals one, two, nine, that's gonna be our uh, background color. We're gonna have 20, it's gonna be let y equals 130, that's gonna be our text color. Line third is gonna be let z equals four, it's gonna be our indentation. But we need to introduce a new, uh, a new variable. We're gonna, we're gonna create a, a state. At the start of our code, our text is gonna move to the right, but when it gets to the far right, we're gonna change the state so that it changes and moves to the left. Okay, so we're gonna call that uh, L. So let L equals zero. So at the start, L is gonna be zero, so text is gonna to move to the right, because we haven't told it what else to do. That's the default. So uh, next up is our print instructions. So print character strings uh, X, and then character strings 157 as our color delineator. Uh, character strings uh, Y, and we're gonna add our tab. Tab is gonna be Z. Okay. And then finally, our message, Dan is best. Lovely. Next are incrementations. So 60, X equals X plus one. 70, Y equals Y plus one. 80. This is where we're gonna introduce our variable. This is where you introduce our left moving uh, state. We're gonna say that uh, if left equals zero, which is, we've already established this, then z equals z plus one. So all we're gonna do, at the start of the program, l is zero, so yeah, l is zero, then z equals z uh, plus one. Great. Let's set up our limitation. So uh, if x is greater than 135, then x is 129. 100, if y is greater than 135, then y equals 129. Now we're gonna change our state. We're gonna say, if z, our new uh, 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 tab variable, we're gonna say that if that goes above uh, 26, then 
L equals 1. And in this case, we've now changed the state here. So next time it goes through a cycle, it won't add 1. It will skip over and it will do what we tell it to do next. And we're going to say, line 120, if L equals 1, then Z equals Z minus 1. I mean, this could go here, but just for the sake of us reading it and us understanding it, it works just fine here. So yeah, so it's going to go up, da -da 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 -da, and then we need to say another constraint. We need to say if it goes all the way left, stop, uh, don't do that. Uh, so line one third is going to be if, if Z is less than 4, then L equals Zero. So it's going to reset. So now we start off, as long as it's zero, the program starts at zero, it's going to go to the right. It gets all the way right, it goes to one, goes all the way left, and it gets all the way left again, it goes back to zero. So it's going to work uh, forever. Let's put in our little break for n equals one to 400, and then next. All right, and then finally, 150, go to line boop, 50. Now, all things being equal, this will work fine. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's great. So we're incrementing to the right. And that's it. We get our limit. Our L becomes a 1. And if L is 1, then Z decreases by 1 each time. And that's it. Great. Now you've blown the minds of everyone within the greater Cambridge area. Uh, lovely stuff. Well done. You are the best. I know this is a lot to remember. I don't actually expect you to do this. Maybe take a photo of this on your phone, get a screen grab and bring it with you and surreptitiously look at it while you're typing away. Um, I mean, imagine if you make it cycle the colors, that's pretty impressive enough. But if you can do this, my, the world's your lobster. So run through our code again for the final time. Uh, we create an X variable called 129, a Y variable called 130, uh, a Z, which is four, and L, which is zero. L is gonna control our game state, our code state rather, um, at the start at zero. So, these numbers are going to feed into our print command, first color, break, uh, second color, uh, indentation, our message. We increment by one each loop, and we're going to say that at the start of our code, L is zero, so we're going to add a one to Z each time. We're going to limit our number range, and we're going to say that if our indentation goes too far to the right, we're going to change our state, our L state from being yes to, uh, uh, well, to no to yes, and as it's a yes, we're going to change it by minus one. We're going to change the indentation by minus one each time. So yeah, and then we get too far this way. We do the same thing. We just change the state again to being a zero, which point it starts moving to the right. So basically, as long as L is zero, it's going to go to the right. Uh, if L is one, it's going to go to the left again, and then back, do, 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 ad infinitum. We have a small pause here as the machine counts from one to 400. Brilliant. Go to 50. That's going to be repeating our... Uh, our code and yeah that's it so now uh, you are more than equipped to blow the minds of everyone within these uh, these confines so yeah so uh, you know that's easy enough to remember isn't it it's just 15 lines of code you can do that you know you can drive you can do that um, yeah <laughs> all right well thanks a lot uh, like subscribe all that jazz check out our patreon and more importantly come down to see us uh, Wednesdays to Sundays, 10 to 5, we'd love to see you. And um, yeah, if you want some in-house instruction in BBC Basic, if you, if you ask very, very nicely. In the meantime, I've been Dan from the Centre for Computing History, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.